universe and welcome to the semi-final review of the Europa League and the Europa Conference League. And boy, 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 totally enjoyable. At least three out of the four games. Uh, and I am would say I'm three quarters at my uh, dream finals in many ways, which are, and I will explain later, I want to see Frankfurt against Rangers and I want to see Roma against Feyenoord. Now, um... Roma should be clear. Wearing Roma uh, should should be clear because they are of all the teams that are left, they are definitely my fav most fav favorite team that I want Rangers to win over Leipzig should also be uh, no coincidence. Uh, for Feyenoord and Frankfurt, I probably have to do a little bit more explaining, but it has all to do that I'm a Lusk fan and at Frankfurt. Coach Glasner is, of course, the coach that was coaching Lask for four years and oversaw the rise. He did not reach the absolute pinnacle, but he's the one who got us to second place in the 17-18 uh, season. Uh, the soon as uh, Lask got promoted, uh, it was a completely different story. He implemented this exciting style. So I have, I'm very, very fond, although as a player, yes, he had uh, one season at Lask, but he missed all of it due to injury. And he was more with the local rival Reed associated as a player, but as a coach, uh, what he has done for Lusk, I'll be for eternally thankful and grateful to him, and I wish him all the best. And seeing him now in Frankfurt uh, doing well in the Europa League, not yet in the Bundesliga, but you know, sees work in Wolfsburg, first season so and so, second season <laughs> took it a step up. So uh, very much uh, in Frankfurt's corner on that one. And uh, as for uh, Feyenoord over OM, yes, there's still it still stinks that OM won the final 93 against Milan, <laughs> but I'm over I'm over it clearly. No, it's also Lask. Feyenoord uh, has a former Lask captain Gernot Trauna standing in there. The baldy is so, and I also wish him to be in the final. Who would I root for in those finals? Well, the Europa Conference is pretty clear it would be um, Roma, despite not being unhappy about Feyenoord. Um, if it was really Frank Frankfurt against Rangers, I just would sit back and enjoy and probably have a teeny bit more for Frankfurt, which is so weird because, you know, as an Austrian, you don't, you're taught to not like German teams. But give him that story. So that's uh, a little bit of the personal story there. Uh, another personal story. Um, I watched only the first half, uh, then I taped the rest of it and I watched it in uh, in the morning. So as soon as the kids were out, watched the second half. Paid definitely dividends there, so uh, I'm all caught up. And I have to say, um, watching all four of them, you know, where they switch back, back and forth is definitely uh, such an enjoyable way of watching it. Because I don't know, I, I probably, um, the matches that I would have picked, it would have been between West Ham and Frankfurt if I had to pick only on one and Roma Leicester, um, which, yeah, I would have missed the great Feyenoord against uh, Marseille game, which was the most enjoyable uh, that evening. Let's start in the Europa League, despite me wearing Roma, but, you know, highlight at the end, <laughs> in a way. Um, and we started the low light, Leipzig Rangers. This was a tactical game, very, very tight, especially Rangers did not want to open up, at least in the first half, there was nothing happening. It was intense, but it was not un unfair. I think the entire game only had uh, two yellow cards, both for Rangers and both in stoppage time. Um, but, you know, a second half starts out better. Actually, I think Kent had a pretty good chance for Rangers, but then it was uh, uh, Leipzig who definitely had more of the game, pushed more forward and really went all out. I mean, in the end, Kunku missed a sitter in a way. But then they brought on uh, Forsberg, Silva, Paulsen and Mukiele. And only took Nkunku, uh, uh, Soboschlei off. So, I mean, it got progressively more offensively. And then, of course, uh, a wingback uh, scores the winner, Angelino, with a wonderful goal. Uh, that was a highlight. The game itself, yeah, was a little bit... Uh, tight. Now, uh, going to Ibrox, I know that the crowd will go nuts for Rangers and it might, on the face of it, it's not a bad result for Rangers, to be honest. But I think the soon as the game opens up, I have a feeling that Leipzig will just cut through Rangers uh, left and right because they are very, very, very effective at that. And so, yeah, um, I would still say Leipzig are definitely 
at the advantage uh, there. The other game was uh, infinitely more entertaining and uh, probably, uh, given the overall quality, was maybe the best game. Uh, and it was also a bit of a fluke because it could have had way more goals than the three that uh, that we just, uh, just saw. Uh, the characteristic was that West Ham controlled and dictated the pace of the game. However, Frankfurt was always dangerous on the count. Count, 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 count. Really, really sharp with finishing and um, right there to take advantage of any whatever small opportunity might come for them. I uh, also, uh, it was reported even in Austria that while the Frankfurt fans made a whole lot of noise, it was bad that there were only 10,000 there because the West Ham crowd seemingly was a little bit flat for a semi-final, which I, I, I'm a little bit stunned that I hear these reports because, you know, English fans, especially West Ham fans, uh, West Ham fans, let, let, let's say, are among the louder ones that I always thought, but then I guess it has to do with the London Stadium, blah, 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 I don't know. It definitely didn't help that within a minute Ansgar Knauf had given Frankfurt the lead. Uh, it was such a weird attack uh, from the, 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 the uh, Rafa, Raf, Rafa Boré on the edge of the box gets the ball and then has enough time to make a, a really good cross where Ansgar Knauf just needs to head it in. Uh, and so the game immediately took it to the next level. Then it was a barrage of ch chance for West Ham United, who came really at Frankfurt. Frank Frank and um, Jerry Bowen hit the post, but if you watch the replay, it just took the ever so slightest deflection from uh, Trapp to pull it on, to, on the post. Without the deflection, I think the ball is going, going in, but this was the slightest of the deflection. Actually, a really, really good goalkeeping that you might, might not see, but in the end, it's uh, from for a free kick that Zuma, I think Lanzini, then uh, uh, Zuma uh, outmuscles the Frankfurt defense and uh, at the far, far post, it's uh, Antonio and Declan Rice who won ahead in Antonio basically saying to Rice, oh, I'm gonna take that goal in many ways. So it's 1-1 one, one, um, and at that point you really thought that uh, West Ham might turn it around, but there was again uh, a counter where Ansgar Knopf really had a good, good chance uh, to uh, get Frankfurt back in the lead, which actually happened then uh, early on in the second half, not, I mean, it was 54th minute, where, uh, an, again, a nice car contact, Musa So take, uh, no, <laughs> not Musa So, uh, So, Gibril So, take, takes a shot, it is just parried off and into Kamada, who was probably, who was probably the best player for Frank Frankfurt. He had another really good, good, good chance, where he just hit the post. I have on the other side, Ben Rama, with a really magical shot, uh, hits, touches just the framework. Um, and then very, very, very late on, Jared, uh, Jared Bowen with a bicycle kick onto the crossbar. Um, and I think there was another uh, big chance. So, you know, it was such a weird game where, yes, West Ham probably would have deserved uh, a draw in there, but with a little bit more, uh, a little bit more finishing from Frankfurt, it could well have ended up uh, with Frankfurt taking uh, it with a two goal lead to Frankfurt. Now, uh, I don't think that the tie is over by any means because we already saw um, when Lyon was uh, dominating West Ham, and West Ham just got a 1-1 at home and then they went to Lyon, uh, to Lyon and uh, within a short period of time had completely outclassed them. However, um, I don't think that the characteristic of the game will change in Frankfurt because Frankfurt will do the same thing. They are in the lead, they don't need to come out, they just need to uh, continue launching their counter with their fans in the back. Could be tough, but I think this tie definitely is not over. I think there's a lot to be played for. We have uh, both ties uh, next week, 5th of May, uh, both played at the same time. Uh, as for the chances of moving on, I have uh, Frankfurt at the moment is given an 81% chance, whereas Leipzig is a 77% uh, chance, West Ham 19 and Rangers 23. Overall Frankfurt, because they have such a good position, are not the favorites to win the Europa League, but you know, still a lot of water to go down uh, the bridge there. Moving over to the Conference League and probably to the craziest game this evening between Feyenoord and Marseille. Uh, that game was wild and it was wild because uh, I think those are two of the most passionate fan bases left. 
Uh, fair or fans, I think a little bit underrated, but of what the noise they can make at the decoy is really something else. And then when you saw up there all the Marseille fans, uh, it was uh, pyrotechnic uh, fireworks from the beginning. I think they even had to delay the game because of it going this way. Now, uh, the game was absolutely wild in the opening sta stage with Feyenoord really taking it to Marseille, who needed to sort themselves. But then it was within two, two minutes that uh, Dessas and Sinistera gave Feyenoord a 2-0 lead. However, Marseille was not to be undone and uh, Dieng in the 28th uh, pulls from Beckham and, and, and uh, Gerson then uh, taps one in. Uh, not outside, right. I mean it's from outside but empty net. Uh, and make it 2-2 two, two just before for the half. And uh, you, you see the, the longer the game went, the wildness and openness of Feyenoord first overpowered Marseille. But then as long as the game went on, Marseille could sort the game and get it a little bit more under control and then show their quality. However, it was all undone within 10 seconds after kickoff when uh, Jaleta Tsar, I mean, literally, the kickoff, back, 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 uh, Jaleta Tsar wants to play to the goal goalkeeper. The weight of the pass is completely off and Dessas gets in and makes it 3 2. And then, funnily enough, the game stall started to start. I mean, it, it went well, but then it kind of started started stalling a little bit because I think everything got to them. Feyenoord then didn't want to risk anything going forward and Marseille just tried to take control and maybe get an equalizer, which probably they would have deserved overall. I thought also a very interesting scene at the very beginning of the of, of that game and Kirkchi was about to take a corner. The corner kick is given and you see Kirkchi waiting there and uh, one of the coaching staff give hands him a bottle of water and some uh, sort of... Um, Food is of course uh, observing Ramadan, and this was the first time that he had that he could really eat. It was really, really, really weird. If I was the referee, to well, I mean, he wasted there at least thirty seconds, uh, right there and then. So uh, just saying, uh, it's just when you know your religious duties and your job get into the way of each other. So I found this a very, very interesting one. But I was surprised that the ref didn't actually step in and uh, kind of allow uh, this to move on. Now, uh, Leicester against Roma was also a very, very finely balanced time where uh, for all the energy that Leicester brought, I uh, always, whenever I saw Roma, was very, you know, uh, like uh, ice in, in the rains, very cold blooded, you know, under control and um, let Leicester come, we absorb them and then we uh, go forward. And that's exactly how, how the first uh, goal came and Zalewski plays into Lorenzo Pellegrino, who just, just can, can, can put in and then in almost typically Italian fashion, uh, Roma did control the game without having much possession and letting Leicester come their, their way. Yes. They had a few, uh, they had to um, weather a few storms. But overall, I always thought that Roma is the more mature of the two teams. However, they got an equalizer. Uh, I mean, it was officially an own goal by uh, Mancini, but he was under heavy pressure from uh, Adam Muller Lukman. But, you know, uh, after that, I think then that the two, two teams kind of said, yeah, let's settle this in Rome. Where, of course, there will be a huge crowd. The pricing in Rome is very favorable to have loads of fans there. So uh, it will be definitely an interesting atmosphere there. Uh, but from what I could observe, I you know, I, this was the game where for some reason they went the least uh, two. But from what it, 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 it was always that um, Leicester made the attack, but Rome intercepted the character forward and sometimes was a little bit too hasty to get it actually properly uh, finished. In, uh, in, in a way. So uh, very, very interesting also uh, this tie. I honestly have to say, having seen the other two teams, I really have having that the winner for the Conference League will come out of those two. I think those are the two best sides uh, left in the, conf in the Conference League. Um, I also have to say why I would love Roma against Feyenoord is because both teams started in the Conference League. It's always nice to have a final for teams that started in the competition, not, you know, getting relegated from the Europa League like the other two would. But, you know, uh, it's the format. So you gotta take it. Um, what I also want, want to know, because you know, uh, at the end of the game, uh, Mourinho and Brendan Rodgers kind of embraced, but Mourinho was telling something to Brendan Rodgers. And I have a feeling it was not a nice thing that was their exchange, but at least they uh, went uh, their own ways afterwards. But yeah, 
Uh, as I said, I really would love for Roma to uh, to move on to the final and finally for an Italian team to win a European title again. Uh, it's not not that easy, but of course Roma at the moment 61% favorite, Feyenoord uh, with that lead also 69% favorite to move on. So my dream final is at the moment, uh, the you know, kind of more probable, but I think it's very, very finely balanced. I, I don't... Leicester, I think, will have a chance in Rome because Ro Roma will play definitely uh, dif differently uh, ahead of this big crowd. And I think Marseille, with their support behind, uh, you know, depends what Feyenoord, uh, how defensive Feyenoord can act actually play. But I don't see it beyond OM to uh, move past Feyenoord as well. So yeah, these are my thoughts from what was happening yesterday evening. Uh, as I said, I thoroughly, it's those two are thoroughly enjoyable because there's so many games you can watch it. Uh, you're not getting bored. Uh, yes, if I would have to pick one one game, yeah, blah blah blah. Also, final point, I have I have to say, and the, we we saw this already in the draw for the Europa League group stage where you saw the teams in there and you really thought, oh, there's there are some really really big name names there. I think um, creating the Conference League was in a way a masterstroke by UEFA because it raised the level of the Europa League in many ways and it gives the Conference League, I mean the teams that are in there, they are fully invested in that one. It makes it a very, very exciting comp comp competition. I don't see any team that really is like cruising away. So uh, just want to add that one. I think you need to have three teams and three competitions in Europe. I think it's just fair. In any case, I would like to hear your thoughts. Uh, please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day.